153. In my defenselessness, my safety lies. You who feel threatened by this changing world, its twists of fortune, and its bitter jests, its brief relationships, and all the so-called gifts it merely lends to take away again, attend this lesson well. The world provides no safety. It is rooted in attack, and all its so-called gifts of seeming safety are illusory deceptions. It attacks and then attacks again. No peace of mind is possible where danger threatens us. The world gives rise but to defensiveness. For threat brings anger. Anger makes attacks seem reasonable, honestly provoked, and righteous in the name of self-defense. Yet is defensiveness a double threat? For it attests to weakness and sets up a system of defense which cannot work. Now are the weak still further undermined, for there is treachery without and still a greater treachery within. The mind is now confused and knows not where to turn to find escape from its imaginings. It is as if a circle held it fast, wherein another circle bound it, and another in that one, until escape no longer can be hoped for nor obtained. Attack, defense, defense, attack, become the circles of the hours and the days which bind the mind in heavy bands of steel with iron overlaid, returning but to start again. There seems to be no break nor ending in the ever-tightening grip of this imprisonment upon the mind. Defenses are the costliest of all the prices which the ego would exact. In them lies madness in a form so grim that hope of sanity seems but to be an idle dream beyond the possible. The sense of threat the world encourages is so much deeper and so far beyond the frenzy and intensity of which you can conceive that you have no idea of all the devastation it has wrought. You are its slave. You know not what you do in fear of it. You do not understand how much you have been made to sacrifice, who feel its iron grip upon your heart. You do not realize what you have done to sabotage the holy peace of God by your defensiveness. For you behold the Son of God as but a victim to attack by fantasies, by dreams, and by illusions he has made, yet helpless in their presence, needful only of defense by still more fantasies and dreams, by which illusions of his safety comfort him. Defenselessness is strength. It testifies to recognition of the Christ in you. Perhaps you will recall the Course maintains that choice is always made between Christ's strength and your own weakness seen apart from Him. Defenselessness can never be attacked because it recognizes strength so great attack is folly or a silly game a tired child may play when he becomes too sleepy to remember what he wants. Defensiveness is weakness. It proclaims you have denied the Christ and come to fear his father's anger. 
What can save you now from your delusion of an angry God, whose fearful image you believe you see at work in all the evils of the world? What but illusions could defend you now, when it is but illusions which you fight? We will not play such childish games today. For our true purpose is to save the world, and we would not exchange for foolishness the endless joy our function offers us. We would not let our happiness slip by because a senseless fragment of a dream happened to cross our minds, and we mistook the figures in it for the Son of God, its tiny instant for eternity. We look past dreams today and recognize that we need no defense because we are created unassailable without all thought or wish or dream in which attack has any meaning. Now we cannot fear, for we have left all fearful thoughts behind. And in defenselessness we stand secure, serenely certain of our safety now sure of salvation, sure we will fulfill our chosen purpose as our ministry extends its holy blessing through the world. Be still a moment and in silence think how holy is your purpose, how secure you rest, untouchable within its light. God's ministers have chosen that the truth be with them. Who is holier than they? Who could be surer that his happiness is fully guaranteed? And who could be more mightily protected? What defense could possibly be needed now by those who are among the chosen ones of God, by his election and their own as well. It is the function of God's ministers to help their brothers choose as they have done. God has elected all, but few have come to realize His will is but their own. And while you fail to teach what you have learned, salvation waits and darkness holds the world in grim imprisonment. Nor will you learn that light has come to you and your escape has been accomplished. For you will not see the light until you offer it to all your brothers. As they take it from your hands, so will you recognize it as your own. 